Well, thank you, and um, hi everyone. Uh, thanks for sticking around um, to the final presentation of this session. My name is Julian. I'm a PhD candidate at the University of Adelaide, um, where I'm uh, investigating the impact of uh, spatial factors on water trading behavior in the southern Moor Island Basin. And today I'm presenting the part of my PhD thesis which investigates um, the relationship between various salinity types uh, and water trading behavior in the southern Moor Island Basin. So to start with, I'm going to talk a little bit um, on, uh, on the background of salinity and water trading. So um, at the beginning of the century, the salinization of soil and water was declared as a major environmental problem in uh, Australia and the Moor Island Basin. So for example, in 2012% uh, of Australia's arable land was classified as saline, and this was even predicted to increase uh, threefold by 2050. And similar trends were observed for groundwater salinity and surface water salinity. And there are uh, numerous reasons for this development. Um, first of all, um, the climatic and geographical characteristics of the Moor Island Basin make, make the basin poor, naturally prone to salinity, um, which means that salt um, historically occurred and accumulated in the basin's environment, uh, for example, in the groundwater. Um, due to a combined effect um, uh, of uh, relatively fl flat ter terrain, low rainfall rates, and high evaporation rates. Um, so we can typically see um, uh, naturally high groundwater levels in the downstream areas of the basin in South Australia. Um, the impact of high salinity levels on irrigated agriculture can be very severe. It could mean that um, uh, crop yields are declining due to a decline of uh, water quality and soil quality. Um, infrastructure is impaired and um, overall agricultural, de agricultural production can decline. So um, over the past few decades, farmers in the Moor Basin had to adapt to various um, changes in the environment and it was found that Water trading uh, was, is now widely adopted by irrigators in the Moor Island Basin to adapt to a changing environment as um, water trading helps um, to increase farmers' flexibility um, to water use and water use. Um, so formal water trading was introduced in the 1980s in Australia and um, today um, Australia's water market belongs to the most advanced in the world. There are um, two major water products that are traded in Australia, um, those ones are, um, so the first one is water entitlements, which um, are water access licenses that provide a permanent access um, to a share of water. And the other one is water allocations, which are seasonal and proportional um, access to a water access license. Um, the literature on water trading behavior suggests that the decision to trade water is um, majorly determined by by um, socioeconomic and farm characteristics, such as uh, age, income, education, and land use. Um, um, what is unknown so far is how uh, various types of salinity have uh, influenced the adoption of water trading over time in the Moor Island Basin. So this map just quickly shows um, our study area. Um, as I mentioned, uh, we are studying water trading behavior in the southern part of the Moor Island Basin. Um, which is hydrolog hydrologically linked. And um, um, the, the model that is used in this study is based on the river valleys um, in, the, in the southern part of the Moor Island Basin, which you can see uh, here on the, on the right map. So it's a, so it's a regional analysis. So we collected two major um, data sets on water trade information. One is from a private water broker and one is from the Moore Island Basin Authority. Uh, the data uh, range over a 10 year period and um, comprised over water allocation and water entitlement volumes per postcode level in the southern Moor Island Basin. Um, this, is, this is the one from the private water broker and the ones from MDBA are uh, volumes of water entitlement sales um, per river valley. And then in addition, we uh, collected some um, spatial data, uh, mainly from governmental sources such as CSRO, and those ones are um, climate data, land use, and the salinity data. 
Um, then we integrated those data sets into a GS system to map them. And then finally, we ran a panel regression model to investigate the relationship between salinity and water trading. So these maps uh, offer um, uh, um, an example of the GIS anal analysis. So we can visually observe spatial, relation spatial relationships uh, between water trading and salinity. Um, the first two maps on the left, uh, we can compare net water entitlement trade and dryland salinity. So um, this is the southern, southern part of the Moordalen Basin um, and those ones um, are the, po so this is a net water entitlement trade per postcode level. Uh, in the middle there's the River Murray, so we can see that naturally water trading occurs along the River Murray where irrigators are located. And the darker areas indicate that um, regions have mainly sold water entitlements and lighter areas indicate that regions have mainly um, bought water entitlements. And if you compare this to the picture of dryland salinity occurrences in, uh, in the year 2000, we can only see possibly just a weak relationship um, between water, trading, water entitlement trading and um, dryland salinity in the south or southeast. But if we look at the right um, maps, on, uh, we can compare net water allocation trade and groundwater salinity. And again, uh, darker regions indicate that um, those regions, water allocations were mainly bought out of the region. And um, uh, if we compare this with higher groundwater salinities or non-saline areas, we can see maybe some uh, spatial relationships. But to investigate this in a little bit more detail and to put it in perspective with other potential determinants, we ran um, the a random effects panel regression model. Um, so we ran the model over several um, spatial characteristics to um, find the influence between salinity and other factors on water entitlement sales uh, per river valley. So we can see that dryland salinity and groundwater salinity have uh, a major impact on water entitlement sales. Um, but um, surface water salinity was found to be not significant in the model. So um, areas in the Moordalen Basin that were affected by dryland salinity um, were found to have sold larger volumes of water entitlements. And hence, uh, we can say that water entitlement trading is used to deal with uh, long-term productive issues such as dryland salinity. And then on the other hand, we can see that um, groundwater salinity was negatively affected um, with water entitlement sales. And this uh, provides some evidence of, uh, on the substitutability, substitutability of groundwater and surface water, which was also found in previous studies. And we think that this result needs some further investigation to understand the um, um, the relationship between surface water and groundwater and to also understand the overall water withdrawals in the Moordalen Basin. And then those results also confirm other study results um, um, between the relationship between water entitlement trading and water entitlements owned, water entitlement price and land use. And then we also have a water scarcity effect, which means that regions that are affected by low rainfall rates um, sell wat larger volumes of water entitlements. So overall we can see that um, environmental factors such as salinity and um, rainfall have an impact on water entitlement trading, but dryland salinity and groundwater salinity have a more important effect than surface water salinity. And this link between uh, salinity and farm behavior um, uh, indicates the wide-reaching influence that salinity is having on Australia's um, agriculture. And it also supports the argument that water markets are used as an important adaptive tool for farm management. And we think that um, um, farm management strategies to deal with salinity needs some further research. And in addition, uh, we also think that 
further research uh, needs to focus on the interconnectivity between the three types of salinity and also to um, provide a more detailed understanding uh, how salinity and other spatial characteristics affect water trading. Um, specific specifically on a more local spatial scale because we uh, could also do only do this analysis on a regional scale. So thank you very much. Julianne also gets a gold star for keeping the time, so that's great. <laughs> um, do you have any questions for Julianne? No, I do. Um, the, I, I found it interesting in terms of Vinod's presentation, uh, presentation before around in-river salinity and the implications that can have in terms of salt accumulation in terms of our groundwater and our soil salinity. And your analysis was showing that groundwater salinity is a driver of market, but in-river salinity wasn't. Any thoughts on it that? Saying, it was? It, it wasn't, yeah, that, that's right, yeah. Um, we find, we were also puzzled by this effect, but it, I think it um, indicates that river salinity is managed by farmers in various different ways, um, and water markets do not seem to be a farm management strategy to deal with uh, river salinity. So they're probably more concerned around uh, plant stress and they need to apply water, and if it's a little bit salty, well, they'll take that risk. So yeah. there could be potentially some long-term disbenefit. Yes. in terms of that accumulation. Yeah. And kind of following on from that question, um, there have been government policies, particularly within the Mali region, that relate to the risk to in-river salinity and the limitations of water trade associated with it. I'm not sure if your work will start to touch on, on those policy implementation and, and what effect they've had on water trade. All right, well, I, so I need to... Okay. Well, I need to have a look at those policies, I guess. Uh, I think uh, there's probably some people in the room that can connect you up with around the zoning policy stuff, but I think the, the policy around zoning and water use within that zoning um, is uh, in the state of further development. Mm -hmm. So it's definitely some stuff to follow up with. Okay. Okay. Thank you, um, thank you Julianne. Round of applause. Now what I'd like to do is to have our speakers. Thank uh, you. Stand up, and we can. Throw